Hey YouTube, welcome back to JDS Outdoors. In today's video, I'm going to make an updated video on how to make a portable 12 volt power box. My first video was a huge hit, however, it left some unanswered questions and uh, I've improved the design a little bit. So I'm going to make a new video to answer those questions for everybody and show the better improved design. And here is the design right here. This is the box, the exact box we're going to be making today. Instead of the 12 or the, the power posts or the bolts for the power posts, we got uh, these banana jacks. Um, you can unscrew them, you can leave them screwed down, and you can still hook your uh, power strips or whatever you want to those um, in either position, up or down. Other than that, it's still pretty much the same. You got your 12 volt cigarette lighter, voltmeter. USB and your LEDs on the front. So you got your master switch, you got your LEDs on the front, you got your USB, you got your cigarette lighter right there, and you got your power posts to hook your alligator clips to. Turn those on. Now these boxes are perfect for um, a lot of things outdoors. You can use them hunting, camping, ice fishing, regular fishing. Use them in your kayak if you have a portable uh, um, depth finder or a portable live well. Anything that you need to run 12 volt power off of, you got your two power posts, so you can do that. Um, use it to light up your tent at, at night when you're camping. Charge your cell phones when you're out in the field doing whatever activities it is you're doing. They're pretty, pretty rugged. They're pretty light. I'd say this thing weighs about six pounds. Um, let's have a look on the inside. It's all fuse protected. This uh, this fuse block is great. If you have a, a fuse that trips, there's a little LED that'll illuminate if it is tripped. And so that way you know which one you need to replace. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward wiring. You got a big 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery. This is one inch larger than your standard, say, Vexlar or Game Trail batteries. Uh, they work really, really good. And as far as the box goes, we're using a Plano, Plano, however you want to say it, field box. So, without further ado, so this video doesn't get too long, I'm going to show you the parts that you're going to need, or the tools. At the bare minimum, you're going to need a razor blade, a screwdriver, a drill bit, and a drill, preferably, and your everyday average wire stripper, cutter, and crimper. Now, to help me speed things along, if you have other tools available to you, um, what I use in combination with those is a hole saw, that is an inch and an eighth in size. I use a bigger drill bit, um, spade bit, I believe it's called. I'm having a complete brain fart on that at the moment. Three quarter inch in size. Combination of other drill bits in my drill. I use a, a nicer to use wire stripper and cutter. And I also use this wire stripper, which um, helps come in handy for stripping wires without damaging internal wires. And a more powerful crimper. So I will uh, pull out the parts here and show you what you're going to need for parts. We're going to start off by using just a plain old field box. Nothing inside of it. Brand new. You can pick this up at your local stores usually. Walmart has them. I'm sure you can find them online too if you need to. Um, also, we're going to use a combination of wire ends. Um, they're called the blade connectors. Um, your fuse block. Combination of some switches. Uh, your banana jacks, I use 
Uh, two different size fuses. I use a five amp hour and a three, or a five amp, sorry, and a three amp. Use the USB, the cigarette lighter, and your uh, voltmeter. Use some machine screws for holding on your um, your fuse block. This is 632 one inch long. I use some LEDs. These are made by Hot Systems for the front. And I will have a list of all this stuff in the description. Um, so you can buy the parts off Amazon if you wish. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to drill the holes for the, uh, the switches. And uh, you got to kind of just eyeball it. Set your, set your drill bit down and mark where you want to drill the holes. And then you go ahead and you drill those holes. After those holes are drilled, you're going to use, uh, uh, if you have the option to use this, the inch and the eighth drill bit to drill your hole here in the middle, in the middle here, and in the middle here. Then the next thing you're going to have to do is if you use your banana jacks, you got to take off one of the back ends. You can see that it comes with, with two ends here. Take the bolts off, or the nuts off, pull that end off. You're going to stick this right here and over here, marking holes. You're going to drill those holes as well. After that's done, then you go to the front and you drill your holes in the front here for the LEDs. Now there's no rhyme or reason um, on where you have to put this stuff. This is just where I put the stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and drill these off the video. Um, just because not everybody's going to use the same process. If you do only have the option of a small drill bit and a utility knife, uh, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. You're going to drill one hole in the middle and then you're going to slowly carve out bigger and bigger and bigger until that fuse or that switch fits in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get these rough drilled, show you what it looks like. So there we go. Now we got all the holes rough drilled. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your razor blade and you're going to want to go all the way around the edge and clean up all that extra plastic. Now making these boxes does take a couple minutes time. Well, actually it probably takes a little over an hour. But they're a lot of fun to build. You can make them however you want. So this is how I get my boxes set up. Feel free to make them make yours any way you wish. I'm going to go ahead and get these cleaned up and show you the next step. Alright, now I got the roughness of the holes cleaned up. The next step is there's some unneeded plastic in the way inside here. We're going to need to take some of it out to get the stuff to fix. Or to get the stuff to fit. Uh, right here is where your fuse block goes. So this piece of plastic that runs across here needs to be trimmed from about right there, about right there where the handle goes in. You just trim it down so it's flush with this uh, surface right here. Um, another part we need to trim is where, depending on where you drill the hole for your voltmeter here in the middle, you're either going to need to trim the ring that goes around it. I know this isn't the voltmeter, but you can see all of these have these little knobs. So you're going to probably have to trim a little bit of that off and also trim out some of this plastic right here so you can put the nut on. Because as you can see, that right there rubs. Um, so we got to just trim out a little chunk of plastic right there. Right where that black mark is. And that will allow for the nut to fit on the voltmeter. Now all the switches are okay. The switches are ready to go in. They can go in right now if you want. The, uh, the banana jacks for your power posts, 
those are also okay. But your cigarette lighter and USB, you got to trim this little chunk of plastic right here, from about right there, all the way down, and this little chunk of plastic all the way down, all the way down to this flat surface down here. Same with this side, got to trim that out, trim that out, and you're also going to have to make two little slits in this plastic right in here. Kind of tough to fit the marker in there, but you can see you got to trim out a little notch like that on each side, right here, right here, and on this side, and this side. You can use a utility knife to do that. You can use a Dremel tool, uh, an X-Acto knife. Um, as long as you get that plastic out of there, it doesn't matter what tool you use, use what you have at your disposal. So I'm going to go ahead and get those chopped out, show you what it looks like. Alright, so now we got all that extra material removed out of there. You can see on the, right here, got that removed. So now your fuse block will fit in there perfectly. So as far as doing holes now, all we got left to do is drill the two holes for the fuse block. And uh, the way I do that is I'll take, take the cap off here, hold it in one spot, and it's got four holes. So these two holes in the back overhang, so you cannot put any bolts through that. But these two holes right here, you just stick your drill bit down through those holes, and uh, you drill a hole. So get that done and the next step is going to be starting to install the switches and all the rest of the goodies. There we go. Now we got the fuse block drilled and ready. So let's go up top here grab some switches so this one is going to be your master switch you just pick the color of uh, LED that you wish and they're kind of a pain to snap in there but you can uh, push them down in nice and tight just like that now on these switches, if you look closely at the back, there's three prongs, okay? You got one that's kind of brass and colored, and two that are silver and colored, all right? So your brass one is your ground. You're going to connect all the grounds together um, in one. Your middle one is your power out. So this will go to your accessory, whether it be your... Your USB, your your lights, your uh, power posts, that's what your the power out is in the middle. And on the top is your power in. So that'll come power from your fuse block here. We'll connect from here to the first one. So get all the switches installed and move on to the USB voltmeter and cigarette. Switches are in. Next step is your voltmeter. Now, earlier in the video, I said that you might have to cut off a little one of these little tabs. Right here in the middle, I've already cut one off. And how we're going to do this, we're going to open up the box, and you're going to stick the tab side up along here. And I had to do that because the end of this hole is too close to this um, bulkhead piece of plastic here. And you can't cut a hole in that, because if you cut a hole right there, it goes outside. And we don't want that. So you're going to stick that down there in the hole, just like that, with part of the, uh, the nut going through those other holes that we drilled, like this, right there. But in this piece, and then we're going to put our fingers on that. Turn it over and start threading it in. And we're going to repeat this process 
just like this for the USB outlet and your cigarette outlet. Now it's nice and tight. The nut is on in there. It's ready to go. Now it doesn't matter which side that you have your cigarette lighter or your USB on. It's a really personal preference. But you just go ahead and repeat that process. Except for you do not have to trim the tabs if you have the holes cut. So show you. Take that nut off. Brand new nut. Nothing missing on it. Go ahead and stick that down in the hole. Hold your fingers on it and thread it in. Except for I don't want the USB over there. I like my cigarette lighter on this side. I don't know why. Just, uh, just do. You're going to thread that all the way on just like the volt meter. Sometimes these cheap plastic uh, nuts kind of suck to start, but once you get them going, smooth sailing. They just have pretty long threads. So I'm going to go ahead and finish screwing that in, get the USB installed, move on to the next step. Got those installed. Next, we're going to do our banana jacks. Take the nuts off here. And the washers. And this lower piece of plastic. You want to keep the upper piece of plastic on because that's a, a spacer and allows it to screw and unscrew. So you can hook your uh, alligator clips to that bottom part of the post or you can hook it up top it minimizes the risk of uh, connecting something because if you put a piece of metal across the top it's not going to touch the metal and short out start a fire or whatever so you go ahead and clip those into the holes that we drilled before using the bottom discarded piece as a template fits right there drill your holes. It works really well. And you just throw it away anyways. So, now we got those sat in there. Go to the back side. Start off with the lock washer. One on each. And you got plenty. It comes with all the washers needed. Then you go to a regular washer. Put that on there. And then you go to the nut. You go ahead and repeat that process four times using the pliers. To, or a wrench, whatever you want, to get it nice and snug. So go ahead and repeat that four times, and uh, we'll be back. There we go, bolted on. So next step is to install the LEDs on the front. All you got to do is take the nut off, feed through the hole that's been pre-drilled, and put the nut back on. After these are installed, all we got left to do is uh, put the fuse block in and start wiring. That's when it starts to get exciting. And 
Next step is to install the fuse block. But there is one issue. Those posts right there stick up too high. It won't let the fuse block sit flush. So the way to remedy that is you take some wire, and I use 16 gauge wire for every piece of wire in this build. You get about a six, seven inch long piece of wire, strip off the end, twist it, crimp it on the end, and now since this is red, this is obviously your positive side. So you go to your positive on your voltmeter, and you clip that on. Same thing, black 16 gauge wire, about a six, seven inch piece. Crimp off the end. Put your blade connector on. Crimp it on. There. So now we got the wires on there. Because so we're not going to be able to reach them here in a minute. But you very carefully and slowly bend them over. So now you got your wires and your connectors bent over and your fuse block fits perfectly right there. So with that being done, now we grab some machine screws and some nuts. And put those on the fuse block you get that tightened down just like that so now that the fuse block is installed and secured in place it's time to start running the rest of the wires we're going to start that by grabbing this 12 amp hour battery taking the connectors off the end Installing it in the box at the furthest position back because of this you can slide it either way but you want to be able to make sure you have enough wire to reach it at its furthest point. And now this first switch here is going to be our master switch. So without that being on you will not have power at all to the rest of the box. So we're going to need to run some wire from the first terminal on the battery, or to the positive terminal, over to the switch. And you want to give yourself a little bit of extra just to make sure you have more than enough wire to reach. So you just measure it in the box. Works pretty easy. Crimp off the ends, or strip off the ends. and hook it up. So we got our first piece hooked up positive on the battery to the positive on the switch or the power in on the switch. Next step is we've got to connect the power out to the fuse block and that is going to send power when this switch is switched send power to the rest of the system. So just a repeat process of measuring cutting the wires to the length that you need. Just twist and crimp. And now this one doesn't take this flat blade connector since it's got a post on it. Same with your, your jacks over here. We'll use a ring terminal like this. 
and that's applied the same way as the blade connector. Put this power out, and it's going to go over to here. Obviously, we got to take the nut off. And at this point, you're going to also want to hook up your positive from your voltmeter because when the switch is switched on you want the voltmeter to come on and show you what uh, how much battery your system has so you just trim off any excess that you had strip the end and add a ring terminal So we'll get that bolted on and we're going to start working on the negatives. Now she's bolted on tight, ready to go. Next step is we got to connect all the negatives. So we're going to jump this negative to this negative, this one, and so on and so on and so on, all the way over to the battery, starting at the furthest point from the battery. So we're going to connect this one to this one, give us a little bit of extra wire. And when you're going to connect two wires in the same terminal, you need a little bit extra wire as compared to if you're just going to hook it up with one wire. So that way you can twist the wires together, they stick together, and uh, hold tight in the terminal. So we got the ring terminal to go on over here. We're going to put our lock washer here on first, flat washer, and the nut. And we'll come back and tighten this down in a little bit here. Just enough to hold it in place. So now we need to go from this terminal over to this one measuring a little bit of extra wire and since all these are going to be crimped together you got to have a little bit of extra wire so we're going to take these two twist them together We're going to go to the next size up blade connector. That way both wires fit in there snugly. You twist them on. And you're going to crimp it. Connect that to the negative. And keep repeating this process, connecting this one to this one over here. Just measuring the wire in the box. So it gets really repetitive but it's really easy so put that on crimp it and this is how you make your jumper wires to jump your negatives back and forth To the other negatives. And we'll come back and tighten these nuts after we get all the negatives hooked up. So now we're going from this one to this one. You just need a short, short little chunk.
Put in a wire. Twist it together. In the blade connector. Until we get to the positive side, we're pretty much done with the ring connectors. It's all the flat blades now. And you just crimp it on the or clip it on the switch. And you just keep going from the next one to the next one to the next one. So now we got most of those jumpers hooked up. We are to the last switch. Now from the last switch here, it's a little bit longer run. We gotta go over to this negative. So we need a little bit more wire. So you just measure it off the box. And crimp, or strip, sorry. The excess insulation away. Put the good old blade connector on there. Crimp her down. So now we are to the last one on the, uh, or the last negative on the box. So we're going to connect a couple to that. One being the negative for the, uh, the voltmeter. So we're going to go ahead and get that measured up. Trim off the excess here. And strip the end. Now also, these LEDs have negatives in them. So we want to make sure that we connect those into this last connection here. I like to run my LED wires to the first switch after the master switch right here. So we are going to measure to that point and we're going to cut off the excess, the excess wire. Now inside each one of these wires is two little tiny, tiny, tiny negative and positive wires. So you're going to want to strip off that extra insulation. And we got to take quite a bit off. So this is where this shines and I love it. I'm going to do two separate strips because it's kind of a lot to pull at once. That'll cut the outside insulation but it will not touch the inside wire. And then you can slide off the excess insulation and you're left with two wires, your positive and your negative. I do a lot of wiring, that's why I have this nice wire stripper. But it is completely possible to do with your regular, everyday, average wire stripper. So now, we got those wires separate. We want to separate the negatives from the positives. Because the positives are going to go over here to this switch. And the negatives are going to wrap around and go to this post right here. So we're going to trim off the excess and strip off the ends. And even this tiny little wire, I don't even know what gauge it is, it's super, super small. Strips it, no problem. So we got those. Now we need one more wire to go from here to the negative over here on the battery. So when the battery's pushed back at its furthest point, we're going to measure over to that post. One long piece of wire. Strip off the ends. And we are going to twist it all together. Now we need a little bit of a bigger 
um, blade connector here. This one is for 10 gauge wire. This one is for uh, the red one here is for 18 to 16 and the blue over here is for um, 12 to 14 and the yellow is for 10. But since we got a lot of wires coming into one, it works perfect. Oops. Works perfect for connecting all four of these wires together. Just crimp around down. Get a little tug. Hook her up. Now we just got to add the negative for the battery. Now if we got this all hooked up right, when we plug this in to the battery here, flip this over and turn the master switch on, our voltmeter should come on and the LED lights up. Yep, that's hooked up right. So the next step is to start hooking up the positives for all the accessories. We're going to start off by our little LEDs in the front here. We're going to strip off the ends. And when you put your connector on these tiny little thin wires, the uh, 16 to 18 gauge blade connector will work. You just got to fold this over a little bit to give it some more surface area. Fold it over. Stick it in and crimp it down really good. That way it holds it in place. Because them tiny little wires like to escape on you. So we put it to the power out, which is the middle of the switch. Then all we got to do is just connect the dots. Go from the power in over to the fuse block, wired or measured inside the box. Now you're just making little jumper pull, jumper cables from the fuse block over to your accessories. And I like to do these one at a time, check it just to make sure that everything works because if I have a defective piece, it's easier to exchange out with the less wires in the way. So we made a little jumper piece. We're going to go from the fuse block to the power in. Now remember, not only will this not have any power in the fuse block until that master switch is on, but these posts are dead until you put a fuse in it. And since LEDs don't draw nothing for power, I'm going to put a little 3 amp fuse in that slot. So now, turn the master switch on. If we turn this first switch, our LEDs should come on. Look at that. Easy as pie. So now, we're just going to keep connecting this one over to here, and that's going to connect our USB. Go back and forth and repeat the process over until all of your pieces are set up. So we got the positive from the positive out going over to the USB and the power positive power in to the switch from the fuse block. Now this is going to the USB so I use a 5 amp fuse for that because if you have two cell phones plugged in one is a 1.1 amp and one is a 2.1 amp so that is a little bit more than 3 amps and it will trip that fuse. But 5 amps is way more protection, way or enough protection for it.
So now, to clean up the wires a little bit, we're going to throw a couple zip ties on this side because we're done pulling power off of that side. So this will help clean it up and also contain the wires together so they don't bend in awkward places. And we're going to start working on the other side. We just got two more to hook up. Cigarette lighter and the positive power posts. Or instead of power posts, you can call them banana jacks, whatever you wish. They're just way safer than using the bolts. I absolutely love them. So let's check, make sure that that USB lights up when we flip the switch. So we got the master switch and the USB. We're in business. Move on to the next one here. Connect cigarette lighter, power in, the fuse block. Power out to the cigarette lighter. And this one doesn't have an LED on it, so we uh, can't verify that one works until you plug in a, a cell phone charger. And since you can only plug one in there, I throw a 3 amp hour fuse or a 3 amp fuse in it. Sorry. Next step is to connect the power posts. Here we have the wire to connect the power posts to the switch. So we're going to go from the power out on the switch, which is in the middle. It's a little tough when you get more wires in there to get fat fingers in there. Power out on the switch in the middle over down to the positive terminal using the same method as before lock washer flat washer and nut and we'll come back and tighten that up in a minute. We got the other ring terminal here. Goes over to the final positive. And being that there's two power posts on one switch, when you flip one on, they'll both come on so you can have power going to two sets of lights if you wish and now we're going to use our last jumper cable we made using the same method measure in the box cut crimp and attach and go over to the fuse block and throw a 5 amp fuse in there. Now all the wiring is complete minus tightening up these two nuts. You can go ahead and put your cover on your fuse block and uh, we'll tighten the nuts up and check it out. The nuts are tightened and that concludes the wiring for the box. Now all we got to do is close her up and play with it a little bit here. So this is the box we just made right here on camera together. I have these little LED light strips that I make that work great. Um, use them in ice fishing shacks. Use them uh, in all sorts of different um, applications. Camping, throw them in your boat, uh, throw them in your tent. They're great. I have a video on my channel on how to make portable LED light strips. Uh, that's where these came from. Feel free to check it out. So we got those hooked up, and we're going to go through our systems here. Master switch turns on, shows how many volts are in the system. Second switch 
turns on our LEDs on the front. Works great so you can carry this as you're walking, say, to go out ice fishing. You walk into your spot and it's dark outside. You're carrying this with you, it's like a flashlight in front of you. Works great. Um, middle switch turns on your USB, charging your cell phones. Um, anything that charges via USB, you can use that. Third or fourth switch, sorry, turns on your cigarette lighter. Charging your cell phones or anything that you want to run off of your cigarette lighter. Last but not least, your last switch turns on your power posts. And remember, you can hook these up two different ways. You can hook it up on the top, like this is, or you can unscrew them and well, they get a little tight when you tighten them down. I forgot about that. Initially, you gotta use the pliers to loosen them. After that, it's all finger motion. So you can unscrew them, hook your um, accessories to the bottom there. Now for charging, I got this question a lot. How do I charge my box? Well, you can do it several different ways. Um, you pick up this 12 volt, 6 volt sportsman charger. All right, I bought this at my local Walmart for $10. It's got uh, a little selector switch on it to, um, actually this one doesn't have a selector switch, sorry. You just got a, a positive and a negative and you can hook it up two different ways. You can hook your positive and negative to your power posts and then after you hook it to your power post you need to turn your master switch on and your power post switch on and that is going to send power to charge your battery. So that's way number one to charge your battery. Number two, you can open up your box. You can unhook your battery posts and hook your charger directly to your battery. That's way number two to charge it. Or you can spend a little bit more money. I believe this was thirty dollars. It's just a. It's called a speed charger, 1.5 amp speed charger. You can use this to charge your car, boat, uh, battery box, and everything. It comes with a little lead that looks something similar to this. You can cut the ends off and permanently attach them to these wires, and then use a bigger wire crimper or a bigger. Um, blade connector, sorry, um, to have these two wires hooked together onto your battery. So that way all you have sticking off is this little plug. So when you want to charge it, comes time to charge your system, you just grab this little plug out of your box, you plug it into the plug from your charger, plug it into the wall, and it'll charge it. So that is the three ways that you can charge this box. I'm sure there's more ways you can figure it out. Uh, they're pretty universal and, and, and fun. So hopefully this video helped answer more vid or more questions that uh, I missed out in the first one. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I will leave a link in the description on all of the parts that I used in this build, minus the box and minus the wires. The wires you can pick up locally on Amazon if you wish. Um, you don't have to use this box. There's tons of other boxes you can use. Um, I prefer to use ones made out of uh, high density polyethylene like these because they're just easy to work with, easy to cut. And uh, yeah, so you guys have some happy building and enjoy. And as always, thanks for watching JDS Outdoors.